Now, I'm just gonna give you a personal story back from when I was in um, in school. Nothing felt more. Li- I mean, honestly, I don't know why. I think there are other things, maybe mechanics, but nothing felt more like oh. You're an extension 2 student. That integration by parts. Just to say, oh yeah, you just do it by parts. And everyone's like, what the heck did I, like, expect to return? Like, what does that even mean, right? <laughs> Sounds like some magic incantation. What this is about, and I did allude to it before, is that we have seen chain rule for differentiation, and then we saw reverse chain rule for integration. And we understand that, and we've been using it a lot. Every time you do integration by substitution, you're using reverse chain rule. But then we saw, okay, well for differentiation, there's the product rule. Well, what's kind of the comparison in integration? And it's kind of integration by parts. Integration by parts is kind of the reverse product rule. And there's a reason why it's not called the reverse product rule. And when we have a look at, I think I've got one, two, three examples. Um, once we have a look at some examples, you'll see why. There are at least two good reasons why it's not called the reverse product rule. But um, first we need to know what on earth this thing is, okay? So it does begin with the regular product rule. Now if I said to you... <laughs> if I said to you, I have, a, um, I have a function and what it's composed of is the product of two other functions, okay? We know the product rule inside out by now. Most of us would write it in this form. At least that's the way I say it and that's the way I think it. If you've got some sort of comparison, I'm sure it's not that far off, okay? Now, two things I wanna do here. Firstly, over here on the left-hand side, I've written u of x and v of x to remind you that u and v are actually functions. They're not just, you know, new variables with different names. Um, and on the right hand side, I've written it in this form because that is the most concise form to write it in. And because in the context of using this, pretty much we're always differentiating with respect to a single variable, so you don't need to worry about which one it is, okay? But that's about to change. So I'm gonna do two things. Number one, I'm gonna write the left hand side as just u and v, because you, you know, you've got it in your mind, yep, these are functions. On the right hand side, I'm gonna write u dash and v dash in proper d on dx form, right? So I would write this as v times du on dx, that's what u dash actually means, plus u times dv on dx. Okay, so this is nothing dramatic. Now this is differentiation. What I want to get is something to do with integration. So as we've seen before, I'm going to take this whole thing and I'm going to integrate everything with respect to x. Now, I am going to do this um, as an indefinite integral, but for the sake of convenience, I'm just going to leave off the fact that there is a constant of integration, and once we state the rule, you will remember, oh yeah, there's a constant of integration somewhere. Okay? So, if I integrate this thing with respect to x, what does it become? It just returns back to what it was before. And again, bless you, there is kind of a constant of integration flying around, but I'm about to have a pair of integrals here, which will also have constants of integration in there, so I'm not going to worry. It's somewhere, it's baked in there. Now, when I integrate each of these with respect to x, I would have integral dx, integral dx. You agree with that? But just as we've seen a hundred times with integration by substitution, the dx's that I add on are going to cancel with these divided by dx's that are already there. Does that make sense? So what this line becomes is the integral of v du plus the integral of u dv. Okay. So now, we're almost there. I've turned a differentiation statement into an integration statement. So I'm gonna do one more thing. I'm going to make u dv, the integral of u dv, I should say, I'm going to make it the subject. Okay. So what is this going to be equal to? Well, all I need to do is subtract that guy from both sides. Do you agree? So what I actually have would be this. Do you see it? Okay, take that put a big box around it. This is the definition of integration by parts. Now, what is this? What does it even mean, okay? The idea is, over here, if you have some integral, and it is a product of one function and another, and the functions that I've, I'm, I'm naming them u and dv on dx, okay? 
if you can define them as such and work out what all the pieces are over on the right hand side, these are the parts where integration by parts gets its name, then you can take that integral and you can evaluate it. 